Hello, everyone, and welcome to session 12 of Financial Statement Analysis Series by Financial Shah Classes. My name is Shailesh, and today we will be continuing with our discussion around analysis of various sources of revenue. In today's discussion, we are going to talk about customer concentration, how to go about analyzing revenues generated from customer base and how to take a look at that customer base. Now, as an accounting standards requirement, there is a mandate by accounting standards to, to, for a company to disclose names of customers or details around the customers who are contributing to more than 10% of the company's top line, which is where uh, you know, uh, companies give out these details who are exactly their customers or maybe at least a broad level guidance around from whom they are generating these revenues. So these, uh, you know, let's try and actually see for ourselves how to go about taking a look at this data, how to interpret this data and how useful that can be for our purposes. So as a case study as point, obviously we will begin with Suven Pharma. So when you open the annual report of Suven Pharma, 20, this is by the way, annual report 2021. When you open page number 21, uh, sorry, page number 112, you will see that in the segment information footnote, you will be taking a look at a footnote disclosing information about the major customers. Precisely as mentioned by the accounting standards mandate, businesses often disclose these details. Now, DuPont International, Boehringer, Ingham, and Bayer AG, they, seems to be, they seem to be the top contributors to the revenue. Now, if you actually calculate the percentage of total revenue from the businesses, which by the way, we have done this here. So for your reference, uh, this is the screenshot which we just referred to in the annual report. If you take a look at the percentage contribution to the overall revenue from operations, DuPont International contributes nearly 30% in 2021 and about 37% in 2020. So 30% revenue is coming from one customer and there's another customer, Boehringer Ingham. So Boehringer Ingham, uh, you see about 15% of the revenues coming from this customer. What you don't see is Bayer AG's figures here. It, it, you know, there could be two possibilities for your benefit. It's quite possible that the company, you know, Bayer AG is still a customer, but they don't really contribute more than 10%. Hence, the figure hasn't been disclosed by the company, or it could very well happen that the company is no longer the customer of so in pharma. So, you know, both possibilities could be there. As you can see, Bear AG was um, nearly 11% contributed to the revenue. So it's, it's mostly the second one where the company is still a customer, but not really contributing more than 10%, which is why those figures have been disclosed. Now it is genuinely, uh, you know, uh, 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 it is broadly considered that if a company has a lot of customers, the business has a de-risk model where, you know, even if let's say a customer leaves, your business wouldn't be that much impacted. So, you know, as a general practice, often people tend to consider, uh, you know, uh, less customer concentration to be a good thing. However, you know, you need to have a broader holistic perspective while making comments around the same. Like, for example, you need to take a look at um, the structure of the industry as well. Need not necessarily always be this statement be true that, um, you know, uh, more or rather, you know, less concentration towards customers is good for business because it's quite possible that there are certain industries out there where due to limited amount of customers, you are bound to have customer concentration ratio to be very high for certain businesses. Again, a case study at point is PI industries. Now, PI industries also operate an agrochemical CSM domain where they supply formulations and APIs to global formulators. Now, broadly speaking, globally, there are around 18 to 20 formulators who, uh, global formulators who buy these products uh, or rather who consume these products out of which, you know, top five global formulators, they have majority of the market share. Now, what happens when you have only, you know, 18 to, 18 to 20 customers throughout the globe uh, buying those products, you are bound to have huge concentration, right? Customer concentration around the same. So precisely making a comment in case of PI industries around customer concentration would be uh, a complete wrong way of looking at things because the, you know you aren't really taking a look at the structure of the industry while doing so. Like I said, you know, one needs to be very careful around these data points before making a broad level you know, uh, 
shallow comment around the same that having a high customer concentration is bad for pi because naturally the structure of the industry is like that they are bound to have a high customer concentration ratio now another thing when it comes to customer uh, revenue analysis or rather analysis of revenue from customer being the source of the revenue taking a look at long term contracts or details of those contracts it's genuinely important pay attention to this because this is probably the best part of this today's session or today's video so what happens what exactly are long term contracts i think you may have heard this uh, uh you may have heard this word in revenue recognition sessions which we conducted couple you know couple of videos back so when you take a look at long term contracts long term contracts are basically contractual arrangements between customers and businesses so it's it's basically that creates uh, enforceable rights on both the parties as well as obligations on both the parties so studying these contracts can be a very crucial way of analyzing things in terms of uh, taking a look at what kind of obligations are created for the parties and potential rewards for the companies upon completing to certain milestones which are set in those contracts now also taking a look at these contracts help you judge the kind of flexibility or the downsides potential downsides which a firm uh, which your firm may have let's say if things go south on the uh, contractual arrangement so you know which is why you need to take a look at these uh, contracts not just these contracts you also need to take a look at you know to cater to that contract what kind of plant the the company is setting up see if a company is setting up a dedicated plant customized only to the requirements of this contract if things go south on that contract you know it's it's a dead investment for the company moreover which is why you need to take a look at the nature of the plant is it multi purpose is it multi product plant like can that plant be used for multiple purposes or that can or that plant can also uh, you know manufacture multiple products so in case uh you know the contract doesn't work out it's not really a dead investment for the company again you know without having theoretical blabber around the same let's actually take a couple of listed indian companies as case studies at point so let's actually go through so uh, rt industries now rt industries in their annual report uh let me actually shift to directly page number 16 you will see that uh, in the time map they have mentioned that you know the company signed two large multi year contracts so these are long term contracts with global players as well as in 2018 they signed two large contracts as well as in 2019 they signed another contract so they engaged into three long term contracts with couple of global players in 2018 and 2019 cumulatively basis to understand more around this let's actually go to page number 71 so you know the rt industries limited talk about that they have in fact created a b risk model where to cater to, to these contracts they have established um, a multi product portfolio or a multi purpose or a multi industry portfolio so in case if that customer doesn't really buy your product that product can be sold to some other customers so that creates a bit of a d risk model so in case if things go south on the contract the company isn't much impacted precisely what happened with the company you know let me actually go to page number 44 as well as you can see for yourself that the company established multi purpose plants to cater to these contracts now when you know things went south so one of the contracts eventually got cancelled because one of the global players decided not to go ahead with the contract in middle of the contract so you know uh, precisely same thing happened here so the company received a termination notice from the customer owing to a change in customer strategy you know it's quite possible that the business decided uh, you know uh, not to outsource that particular activity anymore but in fact to manufacture it themselves so arthi industries contract got cancelled now as per the contracted terms the company actually received 20 million rupees as a shortfall fee in fi 2021 so in case you know there is a floor placed in the contract so the company doesn't really get much impacted in this case because of the cancellation in contract now whenever these contracts uh, whenever a company engages into these kind of contracts more information can be sourced from companies in infographics as well as commentary by the management the top side around the contracts are also present in the annual reports as you can see in this screenshot you know the contract which got cancelled could have potentially earned 4000 crore over the last over the next 10 year period to which they were compensated 20 million rupees so as you can see you know a business often goes through 
these contractual arrangements and sometimes if the contractual arrangements go south at least rt industries wasn't impacted that much because they had um you know the terms of the contract were very clear in case if the contract gets cancelled the company the customer will be liable to pay a certain amount to the company now taking another example here transpec so transpec again engages into these kind of contractual arrangements let me directly go to the investor presentation of september 2020 on page 10 the company has explained that you know all of their plants are multi purpose and multi product so even if they engage into these kind of uh, multi uh, you know multi year contracts with customers uh, and if things go south on those contracts they don't have to worry about things because they can use those plants for multiple purposes as well as those plants can be used for multi products now this gives a lot of flexibility to the firm and sort of de risks their business model now what happened with transpect was you know uh, the contract eventually got cancelled and or rather sorry not really there but you can actually ask questions around these contracts uh, either in the you can find details more around these contracts in the in the investor presentations as well as on phone call in fact one of our alumni ahmed mada who is working with unifor capital he asked a uh, similar question in the phone call of uh, transpec industry so as you can see the question basically asks uh, asked by ahmed was you know the kind of arrangement which you have gotten into with the customer the contract is it really take or pay so what does take or pay mean take or pay would imply that uh, in case you know the contract gets cancelled the company is liable to get a minimum amount uh, from the customer even if let's say uh, you know the contract is cancelled so precisely something which was confirmed by the uh, firm that yes you know the contract arrangement is take or pay is based on a minimum volume so even if let's say they don't really order that much from us they will have to pay a flat blanket fee to us at least this much so yeah in that sense the business seems to be quite well hedged so in case things go wrong with the customers end you don't really get impacted um you know another such case study where you know the impact can be huge and literally impact, uh, was a terrible news for a business was jhs swengard now jhs swengard in 2010 uh, engaged into a long term contract with png let me actually walk you through with that case study as well let me open page 6 where the company mentions a recent tie up with global giant represents a win win arrangement now this was a good 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 year where the company was really happy with the contract um, they were expected to large volumes and in fact so large volumes that it was estimated that this contract would generate almost 50% of their revenues in the next 3 years the company was really happy and you know the share price actually rallied quite a lot in that time because this was a great news for the business now obviously the business uh, you know uh to cater to this requirement uh, jss jhs swengard had uh, engaged into a contract where they were basically manufacturing a specialized product which uh, uh, from a plant which which only created those specialized products however what happened was in 2015 uh, again let me take you through the annual report in 2015 on page number 74 the company decided to cancel the contract so png who was the company so one of our major customers who was wrongfully who has wrongfully decided not to renew or terminate the contract across all business segments due to which certain assets got idle now this is terrible news for the business do you know why because to cater to that particular contract you established a exclusive plant manufacturing that exclusive product and nothing else a specialized plant for that specialized product which no longer was required by the customer so this was a double whammy to jhs swengard why kyunki aapka paisa to plant creation mein lag gaya you know you invested quite a lot of money in creation of that plant uh, which eventually become a dead dead asset and you to to actually you know held the other party liable you had to engage into long uh, painstakingly long uh, you know legal proceedings which are very expensive jahan pe jaldi paisa bhi nahi milta iska guarantee bhi nahi rehta which is why you see this line item disclosed in contingent liabilities where you know they basically filed uh, a suit on their customer of worth about 629 crores and the customer also refiled a counter suit 
against the parent company around 206 crores by the way uh, you know these contracts once cancelled can be very painful now you may be thinking you know why didn't the company think of this earlier you know what if things go wrong obviously this was present in the contract if things go wrong the, the customer was liable to pay something to you know uh, JHS Swengard. However, you may still be thinking, you know, they could have probably focused on a plant which didn't really, uh, you know, maybe make it a multi-purpose kind of uh, arrangement or uh, a multi-product kind of plant. But, you know, what happens is when you tend to get a huge order from your customers, which, by the way, in words of JHS Swengard, could potentially contribute to 50% of your revenue, you may be cornered into agreeing on exclusivity and a couple of other uh, arrangements from the customers. So, which is why, you know, uh, in the prospects of getting a huge uh, upside, you may end up taking risks, um, which could potentially reward you with huge upside at the same time could kill you in the downside. Precisely what happened with JHS Swengard, um, you know, though they did agree to a couple of terms, which they wouldn't have perhaps if uh, it wasn't really a 50% contributor to their revenue, but eventually had to, you know, they ended up with a dead asset and had to invest a lot of money in a painstakingly long legal process where they had sued PNG. Eventually, obviously, they settled this case out of the court where PNG paid around 206 crore to uh, JHS Vanguard, which, by the way, is covered in this Bloomberg Quint article mentioned here. Now, you know, that brings us to a very interesting standpoint, like analyzing customer-wise revenues gives us a very good idea in which industries your company is actually catering to. And if that customer grows, your industry grows. Uh, you know, at the same time, the growth pull from the customer's end may be a growth driver for your business, which is why analyzing customer-wise revenue is extremely important. However, that may not always be true because let's say if, you know, you are basically tied up to the customer through a contractual arrangement. The growth factor comes in brilliantly well only if both the parties uh, stay true to their contractual arrangements and, you know, uh, actually in true sense that contract goes through. But if things go wrong on the contract, both of them may end up in a really, really tedious, long litigation process, which basically, as mentioned here, is a double-edged sword can hurt both of them for a really, really long period of time. Now, JHS uh, Swengard literally suffered for a really long period of time, still hasn't really recovered from the shock which they got in 2010, um, which is why, you know, brings us to the conclusion of this blog. It's genuinely important for each and every analyst to also take a look at customer level information, um, as well as study the terms of the contracts, how those contracts are phrased and, um, you know, in case if you don't really get this kind of information, you could always ask questions in the con call. You could always refer to uh, credit research reports or credit rating reports, because those rating reports, they tend to focus a lot on the risk aspect as well. Um, so, you know, those questions quite very well be answered in the credit rating reports uh, covered by various agencies. So hopefully you guys liked today's session. In case if you have any questions or comments around our content, please feel free to mention it in the video comment section. You could also mention it on the blog where you will find this written content in the financial statement analysis series under the forum. Um, please do like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more such educative content. You can also follow us on Instagram. Our handle is Pinnacle underscore Shah for more informative content around business analysis, valuation analysis series, as well as current awareness and placement processes. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video. I look forward to having you guys in next session.